give it out and take it onto the streets. From coffee and bean bags to bread baking and building borrowing, the churches of Norwich evolve as institutions of community and faith. Norwich might be deemed the UK's most godless city, but its churches can handle the pressure. Thank you for that, Danielle Hancock. Um, so, yeah, if you want to know a little bit more about the churches I was talking to there, we'll be putting up the details for their Facebooks, Twitters, etc. Um, on our social media. Now, churches adapt to survive, but they're far from the only place of worship here in Norwich. For over 30 years, the Norwich Buddhist Centre has been teaching meditation, Buddhism and yoga here in the Norwich City Centre, funnily enough, because that's where it's based. At Great Yarmouth, the Buddhists find refuge in the Friends Meeting House, thanks to the generosity of the Quakers. And here in the Norfolk Storytelling Project studios, we've got a Buddhist, we've found one, and he's come to teach us more about Buddhism. Here's Vladimir Molkanva. Molkanva, but that's all right. Hi, Dan. Hey. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... I was able to go to the Buddhist Center with you. you. You took me with you. And it was really, really nice. Thank you for that. Mm. Um, why don't we start with, I don't know, the beginning? Uh, how did you be become a Buddhist? Well, I was kind of interested in Buddhism for a while because I read some books that uh, were kind of vaguely about Buddhism, but I uh, didn't really know very much about it. And uh, I where I was sort of interested to find out more, so the Buddhist Centre seemed a bit of an obvious place to start. So, so I went along and, uh, yeah, initially just tried the meditation, which I uh, found very helpful with uh, making me feel more positive, uh, helping to settle the mind as well. And then, uh, yeah, started to get more interested in the other teachings of Buddhism, which I uh, found helpful in giving me more of a perspective on life. That well. sounds so nice. Um, so, did you? How did you find the Buddhist Center? Like, did somebody tell you about it? Did you find it online? Um, well, I did know somebody who worked there at the time. Uh, but also, I saw a, a poster on a lamppost one day saying "Open Day at the Buddhist Center." So, uh, just uh, and I was kind of thinking about going there. So it was uh, kind of an obvious opportunity, really. So more like luck or faith. Um. That hey. brought you there, maybe. Yeah, I guess it's just uh, certain conditions arise at that <laughs> point, and that was, uh, yeah, led me to go there. Yeah. So what is your favourite thing about Buddhism? What keeps you going? I guess the uh, big thing that keeps me going is uh, having a community of supportive people around, uh, which I think is uh, very helpful. Uh, if you try and meditate on your own or read books about Buddhism, might be interesting, but I think uh, to have a lot of momentum, it's having that sort of supportive community around you is uh, very important. That's great. Um, as I was in the Buddhist Centre with you, um, I saw you had a little library, uh, nice meditation rooms. It, it was really like a community place where you can go and talk to people. So how how would you get involved if if you're new to Buddhism or to the B Norwich Buddhist Centre? How do you become a member? Well, there's a range of courses that are open for anybody that's interested, really. We have uh, introductory meditation courses, but we also have uh, introductory Buddhism courses where you can get a bit of an idea of what Buddhism's about or what our approach to Buddhism, how it works. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you can go along to those courses and... Uh, then, um, yeah, you might decide if you've been going to the centre for a while that you want to commit to following Buddhism sort of in our particular community for the foreseeable future, in which case you can become a mitra, which means a friend uh, in Pali, which is an older Indian language. Uh, so that's something you can do. And then uh, if you decide that you really want to commit your whole life to Buddhism, then uh, you can ask to be an order member. Uh, but, yeah, there's no rush into doing that you can just go along just get an idea what it's about so we have a range of drop-in events as well so even if you can't make it to a course you can just drop in and try meditation uh, yeah sounds more like a patient approach to become a member it's, it's more like it's slow paced it's not it, you don't become a member right away i don't think that's possible right uh, not not straight away uh, no it's uh, kind of up to you as well in a way some people might just come along and just think straight away it's sort of clicked and that's uh, what I've always been looking for and then for other people it might just 
take a while. So some people come along and then they'll sort of get an idea of uh, what Buddhism is about, and I think that's interesting, but they might not come back, and then other people just carry on for years, but only want to be involved up to a point, and then, yeah, there's other people who'll be very committed to it. So, yeah, there's no pressure to follow a particular kind of... Uh, way into that really you can yeah just take it at whatever's right for you really that's great um i understood that um buddhism has m- main five principles to live by like th- that's the majority you, j- you just need to follow there are no rules it's just they're prin- more of a principle right that's right yeah there's uh five principles uh, or five precepts which tend to be followed by from Buddhists uh, all over the world so the first one's the kind of overriding one really which is non-harm or love is a positive aspect so uh, kind of trying to live more kindly and uh, in a way that doesn't harm other people or other living beings, that's the essential one and many others kind of follow on so the second precept is uh, generosity uh, the negative form of that is uh, not t- not taking what's not freely given to you so um, your obvious example would be stealing but there's other examples taking up somebody's time for instance when they don't want you to uh, so yeah there's uh, I can carry on and on in terms of uh, how deeply you practice them really because you can always uh, be kinder or more generous uh, so there's no real limit to the precepts I think everybody should give Buddhism a try or at least read read on it because it's really an interesting and deep theory of how to live your life and how to become a better person. So um, is there anything else you would like to talk about like when it comes to Buddhism? Or is, is, it, is it mostly it? I think that... Pretty much sort of covers all I need yeah. to say now, really. Have you got any more questions? <laughs> um, yeah, I think we can wrap it up. Um, thank you for coming, Dan. Uh, Dan Champ. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, from B- Norwich Buddhist Center. Uh, for those who would like to find out more, check out uh, the Norwich Buddhist Center website, which is really easy to find, norwichbuddhistcenter.com. Um, or find the Norwich Buddhist Center on Facebook. It's it's in the city center. It's it's really nice and calm. You'll really enjoy it. Uh, we'll say goodbye to Dan with Three Dog Night by Shambhala. And thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Um, we are actually going to go on to our, our next piece. Now, there are many dominations of church, and it's hard to keep track of them all. In fact, if I were to list them all, it would take up the rest of the program and the next one, too. Well, but they all share...